Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Welcome back. It's Maddie and Madison for Spectrum Mark. We're we're mother and daughter team. That's right. We are a mother and daughter team. If this is your first time here, we are so glad that you are here. Welcome, welcome. Today is going to be super basic. If you're one of our returning uh, friends, yes, thank you so much for once again joining us. But we're going to work with embossing folders embossing folders we all tend to have these in our laying arsenal around. yeah laying around in our studio and we forget right in our stash um and some of us do not have some of these and that's okay um because you know what now you'll kind of get an idea as to um what maybe to them. yeah some a little inspiration on how to um, use them it's going to be a super quick video um, because these are just easy fun projects right mm -hmm. to do but break out those embossing folders. Uh, mm -hmm. In this case, we're going to be using these two. This one is from Carabel Studios yes. from France. It's called Circles and Dots. And this one is from Creative Expressions. It's actually one of their 3D embossing folders mm -hmm. by Sue Wilson. And this one is called Dotty Flourish. Isn't so that cool. Yeah, these are very pretty. They're going to be fun to work with. So we're going to be using these two. So you'll need an embossing folder to play along. You're going to need. Right, your machine. Thank you, Madison. <laughs> now, if you do not have a machine, you can use a rolling pin. A rolling pin, correct. Um, the impressions are always better when you have the machine, but don't despair um, because we're going to um, use some water, and that's going to make all the difference, too, in your embossing. So a rolling pin will work just fine, especially mm -hmm. if you missed your paper, and we'll cover that here in a second. We're also going to just use some scrap pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. And when I say scrap, I really mean just scraps. They're these are just, paper. I mean, you can see where we've printed on them. We've, you know, we're, they're just scratch pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. um, some of them you can see where we've actually cut out other things. So just grab some scraps. Then, uh -huh. What I was thinking is you can use all your cereal boxes, like thin paper, like thin cereal boxes. Yes, exactly. Good job. Yes, Madison. You could also use um, recycled material. Well, this is recycled too, but like cereal boxes, as Madison said, thin cereal boxes or pasta boxes or whatever kind of box you have. Cracker boxes. Yeah, if they're the thinner kind, um, they run really, really well. And again, we're going to break down some of those fibers, which is really going to help us. Now, now, we're not just going to use white paper because we need no. to do something to it. So we are going to go through our stash and pick out whatever is at hand. So you do the same. Uh, we could use maybe some sprays. Dilution paints. Ooh, dilution, yes. Dilution paints or sprays. Or the tubs. Yes, we could use, um, we'll see what we have. I, I know what I was going to use. What else? I was going to use um, like the old kitty paint and spray it on there. Yeah, we could do that. So we'll see what we have in the stash, um, and you guys do the same. Just go through whatever other uh, painty materials you have, whether it's water paints, kit paints, acrylics, um, you know, your dilution sprays, your uh, maybe Dina Weekly. oh Dyna Weekly, but yeah, anything you have at hand, and we are just going to have fun. The tip that I have for you is we're going to, and you're going to see me do this throughout the video because I'm going to speed through it. Um, is going to be to um, spritz your paper lightly with water. That is going to help break down those fibers and really get a really good impression with your um, uh, embossing folders, okay? Yeah. I think that's all that we need. Like I said, super simple project. All right, grab your stuff and yep. let's craft along. Let's get to it. I wanted to come back and um, share really quick as Madison and I were actually um, working on just removing these out of the packaging, two things came to mind. Um, the first one is if you are looking for these or if you want to purchase these, I'm going to put the link down below. If you've never checked out our store, we ask that you please do that. We so would appreciate it. It's very simple. It's spectrumartcreations.com. Uh, just like the name of the channel, just like the Email. Facebook group, make sure you join the Facebook group as well. Lots of fun. But as we were removing these um, out of their packaging, it occurred to me to just mention to you guys that you don't want to throw any of this stuff away. Number one, look how cool this is right here, right? It's a great, great, it would make a great tag or a great journal cover. Again, it's nice and thick. So always look at your packaging in a different light. Same thing here. This is kind of neat. Look at that. 
all we would have to do would be cover this with some decorative paper and that could be sewn into a signature or even made into a pocket, right? For the stuff that we're gonna um, actually emboss. So super cool idea. Um, of course, you do want to keep the bag because, again, once you're done with this and you want to repackage this, you can actually use the exact same bag that it came in. So keep those. And then this was what was in front of this one right here, right? And a couple of things. Number one, these are like blisters, so you could actually use them for shakers. Number two, it's great acetate. You can actually cut these out um, and actually create your own acetate windows, right, for items. The other reason why I love using these is, is because they're like wells. So sometimes when I'm working with products, paints, or whatever, and or right, and we don't want to like break out the whole mat or whatever, we can actually use these and then discard them, but now you've given them a use. So you're not just creating more plastic without having yet more stuff that um, you could utilize it for. So just wanted to point that out. Those are some tips. So I, I love, we love repurposing, right, Madison? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a biggie. All right, let's get to embossing. Crafting.
did, well, not the whole video. I deleted the segment. Instead of hitting save, I just hit delete. So I apologize, but it's still wet, um, as you can see uh, on screen. So all I did was we used the um, gilding polishes. If you're not familiar with these, um, Madison wanted to make sure that we also use something that was not necessarily a spray. Um, so these are amazing, gorgeous, beautiful gilding polishes. Let me bring that up. They are from the UK. Um, we used apricot. We used Indian pink. We used electric blue, red bronze, fern, and purple mist. Okay. And what they, um, let me see, is there a piece of paper? Sorry, sorry. What they do is create a delicious, um, here, let me show you. Okay, they're just these creamy, highly pigmented, delicious polishes. Um, and all you do to use the applicator, we used a brush on some of these just to kind of water wash, and you can mix them with water. Okay, a little bit goes a long way. I was actually saying that in the, um, sorry, the video that I deleted. But to use them, you simply swipe back and forth if you want to do an entire segment, right, of a card or a book. See how pigmented, I mean, there's barely anything on there. And look at that. Um, but they are just gorgeous, fabulous, gorgeous colors. Very creamy. You can dilute them with water, which is what we did. We used a water spritzer and some brushes to move them around. See, it's barely anything on there, but you're going to see how gorgeous and look. Oh, okay. Of course, the more you add, you don't have to have streaks. You can make it so that the entire sheet looks like this, but you can see that they also glide on top of each other very, very nicely, right? All right, let's try, I think on here on the base. Yes, on this base, we had used the um, red bronze. And it looks like I barely even touched it, but I did. See, that's the one I used the, um, and there's probably plenty of product on there. I shouldn't have even put any more. Look how beautiful those are, right? So, um, again, and you can obviously fade them in and create ombre effects if you'd like. But they are just great beautiful gilding polishes and again I'll bring it up I know it's kind of faded when it's just sitting on the desk and you can see that they play very nicely without making mud I mean look I'm putting like blue on top and they're still damp I'm putting green on top of pink on top of blue on top of you know and if I wanted to water them down to splatter or to create any other kind of effects I most certainly can do that by simply using water, but look at those greens and blues and pinks and copper. So that's all we did with this one is to basically work with something that is not um, necessarily a um, not necessarily a spray. And again, not that you couldn't turn these into a spray simply by watering them down, and then you know using your brush or we can totally water these down and depending on how runny you want it you can even use them as a shimmering watercolor but again Madison just wanted us to to use something a little bit different than all the sprays that we've been using I mean look I can totally water that down Isn't that delicious and if I have my splatter brush we can come in and do some splatters right not that any of these colors kind of work together, but look how fun that would be. Oh. So you can even use them to splatter as well, if you'd like, right? And create some shimmery um, splatters. Okay, so the next thing to do is to clean up all of this stuff because we are going to finally get to embossing, right? Um, lots of different uh, materials and colors and things that we've used. Uh, and now we're going to come back and be able to um, be able to finally work with all the stuff that's on, on our table, all of these great colors that we've used. 
Oh, those pick up nicely too. See? Look at that. So yummy. All right, guys. We'll be back. And now that our painty papers are all done, uh, we've got the Dilutions. We've got the Cosmic Shimmers uh, gilding. We've got the um, uh, Lindy's. Um, and these are the sepia-based ones. So they're not going to be as... Uh, punchy or colorful as the what are they called madison what? the lindy's Magical. magicals thank you um that and these so these are the moon shadow sprays this is the chalkiness tells me that it's an oxide spray and then of course the glossiness on these tells me that these are the gloss sprays okay and i know they look wet but they're not it's a gloss spray so it's meant to look that way now now that we've done that some of them are still a little bit kind of not wet. I don't want to use the word wet, um, not even damp, but you can feel a little bit of moisture in them. That's what you're looking for. If they're too dry like these, I'm going to end up spritzing them very, very lightly. Okay. Um, now, when it comes to embossing folders, there are two um, different sides to them, right? There's the emboss and the deboss, meaning one side will raise up, one side will actually push down, depending on what finish you want you could um, use either or, right? And you can tell just by looking at them which side is depressed, meaning it's pressed down, and which side is actually popped up, right? You can see this is kind of like a pool. It's got a little ledge, or this is almost like a mountain, right? It's got, it's got, it's going up out of the plate. So, and again, you could play with both. We could do both sides and see which ones we like best. But if you know uh, what look you're going for, you can go ahead and, and do that from the beginning. Now, also, if you know for a fact that you prefer a specific look, right? From go, you could actually grab your permanent marker and put something like this side up. If you always want these peaks, let me show you what I mean. Let me just grab whatever. If you want this one to actually always face upward, um, Madison, if you want this side to actually face upward, she's on the phone. Um, you can go ahead and take it to the garage, honey. Sorry, guys. Um, if you know that you always want this to pop up, you could actually insert your papers, right? And you can use a blank piece of paper to test it with. Um, you could use a blank piece of paper to test it with just to make sure which way your embossing is going to go. Um, and again, I'm just going to put this through. I know my plates are all cracked. I said I was going to replace them by the next video. And honestly, I just have to go back there and grab them. So run through your embossing. And this one was still fairly tacky on the back, so it's good. It's damp. And as you pop that out, you'll see, oh, perfect. Yes, I want my, um, my peaks to always face up then at that point in time you would grab and right here this side up right if you prefer the other way then let's run it the other way so now we're going to flip this over we're going to grab another piece of paper oh this one's too big oh that's not going to work this one and we're going to run that through and see how that turns out Okay, and we can now see, like I mentioned, that now we have swimming pools. Instead of it being um, raised, let me see if I can find that same one here. Instead of it being raised, now it's indented. So again, play with them. Decide which you know look you like best. You can see them in the back a little bit better maybe, right? Um, decide which look, look you like best, and you can always label your um, folders accordingly. All right, we're going to get through... Um, running these through and we'll see what kind of uh, impressions we get and then we're going to come back and play with some um just last minute touches um and some ideas
before I actually did this one, I wanted to pause because I wanted to bring this one back and remind you, remember it was kind of like a mess? I want to make it a point that we um, kind of focus on this one because I think sometimes when we're crafting, we tend to over overthink things, right? We tend to um, really get caught up in in whether something is going to look right or not look right. Um, and, and I was telling you, don't worry about it because when we are actually, sorry for the shaking, when we are actually done, when all is said and done, and we um, are not even going to be able to see any kind of a blotching, okay? And even if you put it through the folder, it gives you an idea that by the time that we're done with this, it's all going to blend so pretty. Already it's looking better, right? I just love these. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> They're just fabulous. But um, I just wanted to point it out really quick before continuing on. The other thing I wanted to point out is you don't always have to, you know what, I'm going to do that one in a different one. You don't always have to um, have to paint these before you actually create. You could actually um, have a whole bunch of white ones ready to go and then do all kinds of other techniques to them as well. Um, you can drip paint, you can use watercolors, you know, there's so many, many things that you can actually do. Um, after so I I don't want you also to get hung up on the fact that oh she did him you know before and I'm sorry yeah I painted them before so that must be the right way not necessarily I just like doing it this way because I don't overthink it I could throw anything oops I could throw anything on here and not have to worry about you know which way is it going to is it going to look right it's just a big blend of colors now if you're working on a specific theme Let's say you're working, I don't know, in pinks or maybe a grunge journal. What you want to aim for is using those colors on your papers, but not really overthinking as to what's going to be here and what's going to be there. Um, and then just, you know, creating. And then, I'm going to mop up some of that water. And then, and I keep flipping it back and forth so that when we're done, we can see all kinds of different finishes, right? Um, and then just run it through and then you know for sure your colors are going to match whatever project you're working with but you're not really concerned as to the placement of the actual paint okay all right and there's the last one I mean look at that it's you know pretty cool it looked like blotches before but not once it's actually embossed and we are not done let's bring in some alchemy waxes of course always always craft mat right protect your area mm -hmm. That is a must. Remember that alchemy waxes are permanent, so um, so always protect where you're working. Now, alchemy waxes, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with them. If you are not, you definitely need to get acquainted. We've even got some new ones just this past week. These are the brand new releases for 2022. These are the antiquing waxes, um, and I will... Um, We'll be sharing with you the difference between the antiquing. There's opals, there's, um, gosh, there's metalliques. There's all kinds of different um, ones. But what these are, this is the clear one. This is a protector sealant. And I did actually share some other uses um, during our last um, live sale. So if you have a chance, you might want to play back that. Maybe I can even, um, no, I would have to, those are very long videos. So probably not. But. There are many great uses. Maybe I'll come back and do a video on those. But the antiquing waxes are translucent. They're not meant to actually create, um, have coverage. You can layer them up to actually create um, medium and full coverage, but they're not meant for that. They're meant to actually make things look old, vintage, mm -hmm. distressed, banged up kind of thing, right? So that's what those are. Of course, they also have amazing... Uh, vibrant colors as I mentioned um, and then they have some more subtle ones um, but they're great these are the new packagings by the way this is how they used to come in these little tins uh, they're now packaged this way but what you want to do and I'm not going to do every single one of um, these you know while you're watching um, I'll just kind of come back with the finished ones yeah. but what you want to do is basically grab some of it you could either squeeze it onto your table you could use a palette knife 
I just like using fingers because, as you can tell, I love using fingers, right? And all I'm going to do is basically dab a little bit on my finger and then even push some of it down on the mat because a little bit goes a long way. And then I'm going to lightly start bringing in, just brushing it ever so gently. Oh, it's not showing up on camera. It will in a second. Brushing it over the top. Let me just focus on one area and then I'll bring it up. It's probably the angle too. Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. All that I'm doing is bringing up that relief. Um, you could combine different colors, right? So I could do that there and then maybe on this corner as well. If I feel I have too much on my finger, that's when you'll see me tapping because it is, it, it, they're very smooth and you don't want to be too, too heavy handed on these. But this is going to bring that relief out now, okay? So let me get a, um, a rag. Oh, thank you, baby. Just hold this over there for a second, okay? Okay. All right. So let's say that we want to, uh, I don't know, highlight. How about maybe that um, maybe that pink, right? Add a little bit more pink. Oh, no, we have a lot of pink. Let's try, let's try some of the purple. Let's bring out purple. Oh, we could have gone lighter, right? Because there's some lighter ones. But let's bring out, let's make this one a punch of color. Again, you want to bring some out. Clean it off your finger a little bit. And then just start brushing. Look at that. And again, I'm going where the gold was as well. So it's not a problem to kind of mix. But look at those highlights now, right? What was once blended is now definitely very very visible right let's go in this corner over here we don't have any color okay and we can start again we can decide like it love it great don't want to add some more gold then we just go in and go right on top of it we can change our minds and antique it if we want to we can make it more subtle we can mix the two and make a purpley gold look at that oh so pretty, right? Yeah. And we can even pick specific areas to highlight. Madison, honey? Oh, okay. Be careful. It looks like it's going to topple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and look at that. See, we were subtly starting to bring some of that out and even mixing some purples and some golds. Um, so that is one great way to highlight. Let's look at one more and then I'll speed through the process. Let's do something different. Let's do this. Let's use the same one. Or actually, where's Firebird? I love this one though. Ooh, let's go darker. Let's go rich copper. Yeah, that could work. That could work, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe we'll use an antiquing one. And you can, I don't know if you guys can see, let me see, as I'm rubbing, how they start to appear. You see that? Yeah. Let me just do maybe focus on one area and then I will, will compare. How about if I do half and half and, and then more. we'll come back and compare. Oh, kind of heavy on there. Too deep. I took too much. Okay. We can compare the two. We'll do one half with and one half without. And then you'll see how the richness actually brings out the colors even more. So, again, you can look at this half right here. Mm -hmm. Let me see how I can get this to focus. There you go. You can look at that half and then you can look at this half, right? Totally different um, finishes. But by doing this, you're actually bringing out that relief even more. So now it becomes a focal point right with highlights let's do one that is perhaps reversed okay so in the oh yeah in this case this is now debossed right so whatever color I put is going to bring the majority of color to this um, so let's it's not going to be the highlights these are going to be the highlights I mean the low lights and these are going to be the highlights let's see let's see I don't have all of the colors there are so many beautiful colors and I don't have them all. You know what? Why don't we try an antiquing? Let's try it. Let's do it. 
Now, again, the antiquing is going to be translucent. So it's not meant to give full coverage. It's meant to look, make this look old. Um, this is probably the right, the wrong color because it's pretty, well, you can still see it. But you know what? Let's try it on something that's debossed and lighter. How about this one? So let's go in here and start making this look more muted, more distressed, yeah. more grungy. Oh, what color did I use? Anybody? Oh, Lord. What color did I use? Sepia, right? Yes. Was it sepia or mahogany? Sepia. I now I wish I could rewind and hear what I said. Oops. I went too... I put in too much color, but that's okay. We can use it on other ones. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You can see right away what it's doing. It's making this look very old. Much... I mean, you still have the highlights, right? But now you're having these areas, these pockets, these cells where you can see that it doesn't look as new or as shiny. So it's creating some highlights and some lowlights, which is fabulous. Me tapping. <laughs> it's just me tapping on the map. Oh, yeah. See that? So we just run from the very, very shiny to the more, you know, vintage looking type of like if somebody, you know, over the years had uh, been touching this uh, piece of paper and now it actually looks almost like that worn piece of like newspaper look. You see that? And we can even work into getting into those grooves even more if we wanted to. I love that, that light right there. So, oh. Yes, yes, yes. So, again, that is another way of going from, there was another half to this, wasn't there somewhere? I'm sure there was. I don't know what I did with it. I think there was another piece to this. Anyway, I'm sure you guys can see the difference from when we started to this, right? So, that's another way. Um, the, other, the other thing I wanted to point out before I start going is, this one was kind of funny, because... I wanted to clean out the sponges, right, from the cosmic um, gilding um, pastes. And <laughs> instead of wasting it, I just went ahead and put them on here because I thought that would be fun. And then we'll see what kind of finish. And so was this. This was that scrap piece of paper. But once again, what we're going to do now is take our waxes and start doing some um, highlights on these in different colors. Before finishing up, I wanted to come back and point out a couple of things to you guys. Um, a good way to actually look for highlights. For example, this um, already has some beautiful emerald greens in it. So one way to actually highlight, as you can see here, is to actually bring in another color, right? And you can see the difference in instantly, right? You can see the difference between this and this. And depending on how much you layer it up and where you layer it up, that's going to dictate your um, your highlights. So you could leave some corners a little bit grungier and maybe only highlight some areas. See, like, let's leave this area here a little grungy as well as that border. So that is another great way to lighten up anything that you have at hand. Then the other one I wanted to point out is just how much I am loving the antiquing paste, and maybe that's just because me. I love anything antique, anything grungy, more muted. So um, you can see again the beautiful color. This doesn't really need anything. So what I thought was, why not actually bring in some low lights now, right? Instead of highlights. And I think I was using mahogany. I could be wrong. Oops, I don't really get that one, but okay. It's a big piece of paper. And oops, you can see immediately. See just right here the richness that it actually brings. It hasn't really changed the paper because the the green low lights or the you know they're they're in the low spots I should say. And so it's not really touching those beautiful pops of green, but it's just giving the rest of this some um vintaging, right? Or some antiquing. Now if you ever get into a spot where you're like, oh gosh, I just kind of overdid that. Don't forget that you can come back in and buff it with a paper towel or a um, 
or a rag, right? You can actually come back in and buff it if you want to remove some of it. But I, I love those darker tones um, without really changing um, the colors all that much. Let's do another dark one here. I mean, look at that. Isn't that great? And let's do another dark one here in this corner because we're going to pretend that that's a corner that's kind of, you know, it's a corner. It's in the dark, right? It's a darker area. Oh, absolutely yummy. And don't forget, again, you can always um, continue to add and layer up. So that's another way of um, working with those. Then I wanted to talk to you about the graphite. I am loving the graphite. Why is that? Because, and again, um, I'm, I like the more muted stuff. This was very, very colorful, as you can see. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but where I've actually applied the graphite, it's just given it a little bit of, of more of a muted, subtle color. So let's look again at this really light, light area right here where I haven't actually worked, okay? And hopefully it'll show on camera. And you can see that right away. Look at that, see? Right away, it's it's actually muting the color a little bit, but it is still leaving all the stuff in the back, allowing this to actually be even more gorgeous, right? More luscious by creating those interest focal points, like those lights that are reflecting. And again, if you think that it's too dark, you can always come in and buff it. But me, I am loving, and it actually helps it to blend too. If you had, um, you know, blotches, this will actually help it to blend. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I have to do some still photos for you guys. They're so pretty. Um, I mentioned to you that one of my favorite colors is um, the Firebird. Uh, this has been for, for a long, long time. But I wanted to, um, more important than highlighting that color, was to share with you how, I mean, look at this. This is very subtle, right? Look at that, right? It's so rich. Don't be afraid of, like we talked about, debossing because, look it, you can actually, by bringing in a little bit of your alchemy waxes, those areas are going to pop out even more now. And again, you don't have to put it everywhere. It doesn't, you know, I don't know what I'm going to use these for. Maybe cards, maybe ATC backgrounds. I have no idea what we're going to do with these. But just, I mean, look at that. Isn't that amazing how it just went from being so um, muted to now being absolutely rich and gorgeous, right? Okay, so that's another thing I wanted to point out. Then the other thing I wanted to point out is once again, oh, sorry, hang on one second, guys. Phone call. Okay. Sorry, I forgot to mute. Um, is the the soot? The soot is very similar to the graphite, but it's a little bit darker. Again, this is the antiquing, so it's not going to, you know, completely remove all of this. It's just going to be enough. You see that? To to bring in. Ooh, I tend to be heavy-handed. Sorry, but it's okay because it's a big piece of paper. This one reminds me of, and I'm sure you guys are gonna. I'm going to take you back, right, memory lane. Do you remember when you were kids and we would be in elementary school and we would take the pencil and um, le lean it sideways and then just kind of use that to create that, you know, graphite color? Um, that is exactly what this reminds me of. I mean, look at this. Look at I mean, there's a world of difference between that and that. Um, it's just so much richer. Those colors in the back are just really highlighted now. And it just looks, oh, it looks so rich, doesn't it? With just a little dab. And again, you don't have to put it everywhere. I kind of did, but you can always take it and then just run your fingers and start fading it out, right? Feathering it out if you want to. If this area is too much, I can come in and buff some of it out. See? Let me finish this off, and then I want to show you the other one that I was thinking about. I don't want this to get too, too lengthy. Oh, that is just delicious, delicious, delicious.
beautiful, gorgeous. All right, the last thing I want to talk to you is about the light colors, right? So I had done this one with some silver, and I was like, meh. Um, then I looked at this one, it was kind of muted. Then I realized that by using the old white, he can almost create like a ghosting effect, which I really like. It's just a very um, sheer kind of like a vellum look to it. See that? Now, I could come in with, um, you know, more and like, let me, let me put some bit heavy on here. Hang on. See, I could do that if I wanted to, but I don't. I want to create that almost like a ghost effect on here, which again is just allowing the stuff in the back to, to be highlighted, right? Now, I'm going to pause because I don't want this to be too, too long. And then I'm going to bring back, um, actually, I like it just like that. I want to leave some areas not highlighted. Yes, yes, yes. See that? Super fun. Um, and the same thing here. If I wanted to come back now, see, I can actually add, oh, it's not showing on camera. Hang on. Let me show you how you can actually also bring in the white to kind of see, kind of mute those greens it's a little bit bright madison really likes bright colors <laughs> so if you're into bright colors join the madison team um i am more of a muted person so i'm going to create a little bit of a ghost effect on here and then i'm going to bring back um the last piece that we have and actually i might even play with this one some more but i wanted to show you how we went from that cleanup mop up page to this by using alchemy waxes that's all i added this was the same paper that i just cut in half and they both have the same circles and i just added some alchemy waxes and brought out all those other rich colors okay so i'll be right back okay so the last thing i wanted to do was show you um how great it is to use your dilution um uh, sprays or watercolors or watered down acrylics or any other sprays that you have in your stash, uh, maybe some mica sprays um, to actually create the runoffs, right? Now, I wanted to use one of those and Madison said, not happening. So, <laughs> I guess I'll be using this. The only one she's willing to let me use is going to be the scrap piece of paper. Oh, wrong spritzer. Where'd it go? I know, that was kind of funny. So, this is that just crazy page that we did. And all we're going to do is we're going to bring in some of our spray. And because of the wax, it's going to create a resist in some areas, not all areas, right? Which is the part that I love. Now, I've never tried this with the gilding cosmic, so that's going to be interesting to see. But this is another great way of actually getting paints to run. Oh, look at that. It's actually creating a resist as well, I guess, because it might have some kind of a waxy property for the uh, gilding. How interesting. Hang on. Let me try it on here. Yeah, the same thing. It's a resist. How fascinating. Let's see what turns out when we do that. I don't know. We're about to find out, Madison. I've never it's seen this before. Oh, I'm going to like this. See how it kind of just runs in the channels? So that is another great way to create those pools. So I'm going to keep playing along with that. You guys get the idea. And then I'm going to come back because I need to dry this a few times. Oh, boy. I think I found a brand new toy or mixture of toys to play with. Look at this. Well, yeah, this is the resist, I guess, from the um, gilding polish has actually um, done this awesome, like, finish to the dilutions, which is so different than what I normally do. I might have to do some photos. Do you see that? Look at that up close. It is gorgeous. It looks so, it completely changed it. I mean, it went from that to to that so uh yeah we are going to be playing with some of this awesomeness that is just great how it's settled in the crevices so okay. what's that honey um, um paper mm -hmm. tags for 
ATCs. Okay, so they're all going to get mounted on ATC cards. All right, so um, that is going to be our last thing, I guess. I am going to um, help Madison cut these down to a two and a half by three and a half size, and we are going to come back uh, with some ATCs. I'll probably just do some still photos for you guys because um, I don't want, no, at the end of the video, because I don't want this um, to kind of keep stretching. Oh, we forgot. Where's our ugly duckling? Where was it? Which one was it? We forgot to see what was the end result of it. Oh boy, guys. What did it look like? It had an X on Oh, is this it? Nope. No, that's not it. It had an X. Oh, there it is. So do you remember when we did that and I said, don't worry about the blotches because you they'll kind of just all blend in. They've all blended in, and I'll do some still photos again because um, it looks even prettier when it doesn't have all these three. I've got two lights this way and one light coming down, so a lot of harsh lights on these. I'll do some still photos, and we will look at these once they are cut down to ATC sizes. Yeah. I hope you guys have um, enjoyed it. I hope you will try it. Break out those embossing folders, get some water, and whatever you have in your art studio, and just... Oh, Madison would like for you to leave a comment. Would you please? That would really help. We'd love to hear um, what you think. If you've tried it before, maybe you have other suggestions that you want to share with folks. You want to tell them yeah. what you've used um, and what are some of your favorite mixtures as far as um, creating with embossing folders. Can't wait to hear what you guys have done. You guys have a blessed day and thanks once again for joining us. Thank you. Bye.